good evening one and all i welcome you all to today's webinar hosted by chas council of india myself dr rahul consultant surgeon from dawan gere expertized in laparoscopy and minimal access as you all know this pandemic has made every doctor realize one should be aware of everything happening in and around irrespective of his specialization it's an amazing initiative taken by chas council of india who is being conducting various webinars master classes during this pandemic and helping many doctors upgrade their knowledge at their convenience i congratulate entire team of chas council of india for having organized more than 75 webinars on various topics during this pandemic and helping many doctors upgrade their knowledge i feel privileged and honored for being invited by dr krishna and his team to moderate today's webinar it's an amazing platform for all the doctors to come share their views and know about their experience it's an amazing platform for all the doctors to come share their views and know about their experience today we have amit sir a well known pulmonologist and pioneer in fluoroscopy dr hanuman ganapati varudkar dr varudkar completed his graduation and post graduation from bj medical college pune He has done PhD in allergy from University of Pune. Sir has worked at various hospitals, medical colleges, and retired as professor and HOD of medical college in Ujjain. Sir is a pioneer in fluoroscopy and has patents in fluoroscopic techniques. He has trained more than sixty doctors across the country. Sir is here to enlighten us on lung pleural diseases. fluoroscopic techniques and thoracoscopic techniques and their implication in modern era we are all here to find a economical solution for treatment of pleural diseases i request all the doctors students delegates to make maximum utilization of the session and come up with all their queries and doubts now i hand over the session to you sir good evening friends it is it gives me immense pleasure to be with you this grand occasion so we are going to cover very important topic pleural diseases and uh, that is a very uh, challenging field in uh, pulmonology so friends uh, let us share experience our uh, with our technique uh, basically i consider all of all of our audience is uh, having a basic um, uh, knowledge experience and uh, of our pleural diseases uh, pleuroscopy thoracoscopy etc etc so what i was thinking that i need not uh, go into the uh, subtleties of what are the indications when a standard p what i want to uh, stress the, the the what are my what is my experience with that particular thing so from that angle i am going to present my experience and you uh, evaluate uh, that particular uh, subject from that angle so if you have got difficulties naturally we will discuss them at length any time but uh, i want to be very uh, fruitful and uh, to the point discussion on this one so let us go to the first slide well if you are going to do thoracoscopy what technique what technique you want to adopt that is first basic questions so the techniques will depend upon many things say for example you have got a good finance fine that is first basic requirement of anything you have got a good setup fine okay there are good uh, buildings and dressing everything is there then good backups that is also a very important thing and uh, good training so if you get a good training a good good backup you have good setup and everything then you would love to go for invasive surgeries and if it is invasive surgeries so natural the choice is this vats vats so if you this is the uh, thing you will prefer to do and now suppose let us go 
suppose you have got a moderate resources maybe limited finance maybe average training and uh, maybe epic backup is not all that good and moreover you are not very invasive type of surgeon so what would like to what this is by be your choice so that is our conventional thoracoscopy visit thoracoscopy maybe single puncture maybe multiple punctures or whatever it is but this will be a your choice now maybe there is still more hackadagery you have got a compromise skill well no poor backup is there or you want to do only a diagnostic work and uh, don't want to take much of risk we just diagnostic work so here this is a semi rigid we consider in this uh, semi rigid characteristics and limitations it's a for a good physician for a chest vision this is a very poor compromise because this will give you only and only diagnostic piece. you can't do anything interference interventions of the pulmonary uh, pleural space well when you will uh, as we will proceed further we will know how a lot of interventions can be done by a physician and they are all safe they are all safe so for a physician you cannot say that i don't just want to diagnostic work and no further things so let us see what is going to happen in this and oh, suppose there is another variety of uh, physician has a average finance has got a average backup well he is a lone warrior he is alone in a taluka place they still place and uh, maybe not a much of backup something he has got a average common setup and there are so many limitations of this man and what is us and he wants to give best results he wants to do better than the uh, maybe uh, uh, rigid thoracoscopy so is there any choice for this particular uh, expeditions and yes there is there is a technique newer technique we call it recently as a pure pure vitek uh the previous names like indigenous technique or varudkar techniques are uh, rather uh, we want to uh, avoid them because they are going to be uh, limitations of that names but uh, here is a whole set up of the instruments you have got a huge number of uh, large number of say, instruments select the two straight uh, conduits are there is a small curved these are the handles and then these are various uh, this is a parietal pleuroscope without window this is wonderful this is the parietal pleuroscope with a nice curvature for interventions this is another parietal pleuroscope with a window and this is the visceral with it. this is for your uh, favorite uh, processor pleurodesis you can insufflate the uh, in, in, uh, material contents so in short we have done uh, a you uh, want you a complete setup of doing uh, thoracoscopy diagnostic work as well as uh, as well as uh, therapeutic work so a lot of therapeutic works uh, and in, uh, interventions you are going to do with this particular technique and this is going to be a perfect technique for the physician with um, with it in a please note that this is not a compromise for any uh, i mean com compromise is not a compromise for our work and this thing it is cheaper but at the same time it is very effective very useful for common so the profit benefit ratio is extremely high with this particular techniques so why i am spending so much of my technique is there any reason for that yes there are reasons one of my colleague uh, has uh, compare these uh, pleuroscopy with uh, rigid uh, technique or conventional technique and these are various differential points of our uh, technique with the conventions so here if you say general then the, you can see that it's uh, the, uh, it is a naturally patented uh, by us so it is a matter of pride for us we should uh, encourage our own uh, technology uh the uh, there is ease of handling durability the care of instruments and breakage if you consider these points these are uh, uh, definitely superior uh, superior than the conventional uh, instruments so i i need not dilate on this particular the aspect let us go to the further suppose preoperative uh, aspects are to be considered like sterilization site of operation anesthesia pre anesthetic fitness and these or even unfit cases 
for the for us all these points the technique scores better this will the better than the mm, better than the uh, conventional uh, for uh, for hs vision so for example the unfit cases what i want to say we, if you want to uh, go uh, sub menu hello the third is intraoperative intraoperative has got uh, so many points to be consider the incision ventilation say the for example our uh, technique is natural ventilation then the uh, man power requirements or even lung physiology is better with our technique so an access to difficult part is another aspect so you can go to the apex you go to the intra fissure uh, between the fissures and uh, this this is it scores over this suppose the cavity exploration is there you want to go into the cavity which is easily available accessible so then you can go inside and peep inside you can see what it is so that also can be done safely with our technique then the post operative care naturally because this was natural ventilation less of intervention and everything so we uh, this this particular te technique will score over the other techniques and uh, that's why let us go to the further next step and then what are indications what this is what uh, conditions would like to go for well the indications uh, you all know pleural effusions empyema hemothorax pneumothorax hydronothorax so many 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 more things are there so each time in effusion is not only uh, indication what are going to do with the effusion that is thing empyema is not only the uh, indication what are going to do with empyema so hematorex so that is the thing that is how we have to look into the problem instead of looking for only diagnostic work what i am going to do say for example pneumothorax what i am going to do i am not going to see so that is the uh, how it has to look into these indications say uh, what do you want you want to achieve the perfect diagnosis of hello there is a disturb disturbance hello perfect diagnosis is our aim perfect stage the uh, staging of the disease somebody interested in staging of the disease there is also can be uh, possible and then minimum interventions we want to don't uh, want to disturb the uh, natural physiology that is one thing we want minimum morbidity also we don't want so many uh, pers our person patients to be having extra risk then full lung expansion that is our aim though so you know if you do any uh, intervention at the end of the procedure we wish the, we should give the lung fully expanded and naturally total outcome should be healthy patients so there are so many things and over above then we have to consider that this is economy of this and if you want to consider all these things together well uh, nothing competes with uh, our pleurovitec uh let us say uh, suppose you want to go for any uh, thing what uh, what are the supporting hands say you as a patient of the pleural disease so you will investigate radiologically you will do laboratory test you will do fluid analysis see what is the diagnosis you do all the surgical test close space open biopsy you know open biopsy is not our uh, common um procedure however the many commonly procedural procedures are uh, in the purview of our this diagnosis uh, discussion so does any single investigation give correct diagnosis that is my question with these things apart from open pleural biopsy because that comes part of a thoracoscopy so does that give uh, investigation i would say most of would say i agree yes not as a single in uh, not any of these investigations is going to be helpful to the physician or a doctor it has to be a combination of the uh, test but uh, at the same time another problem, uh, aim is therapeutics can any uh, of this procedure drain the contents no 
can it cure some of the basic pathology no i mean then these are the aims we want to cure them we want to have reduction of the pleural sequelae that is also very important thing so curing has a multifaceted uh, things but reduction of the pleural space is a specific procedure and then restoration of lung is a sequelae of our pleural uh, pathology so the pleural pathology is working well uh, if you are managed well then the lung functions will uh, be normal if it is not managed well naturally lung functions will be poorer reduction of morbidity mortality and morbidity is all our uh, part of our total profession we must uh, have this uh, as a final goal of our treatment that is it and then consider diagnostic utilities diagnostic requirements therapeutic requirements and various combinations and expectations thoracoscopy is a choice for both the things because previously uh, i remember very well one of the eminent uh, physician and uh, younger gs patient had a uh, debate and at that time i thought that yes senior man is okay but now i am fully convinced that all pleural diseases maybe pneumothorax or maybe uh, fluids or all should be uh, submitted to thoracoscopy because we have seen wonders with the uh, procedure now there is let us go to uh, some routine matters uh, quickly say pre operative preparations for example they are all no anesthesia anesthesia mostly uh, anesthesia we go for only uh, mm, it can be general anesthesia it can be local anesthesia or maybe conscious sedation these are the things but pain management and basic drug therapy this is all you know very well i am just uh, recapitulating them for our uh, protocol now the most vital thing is what should be the point of entry because that will decide the success of your procedure uh, so does clinical examination give correct point of entry well probably may not radiological still again they will be able fluid is there air is this sometimes in a difficult case may not be ct scan yes maybe but uh, may not be all that economically feasible all the time or it may be not justified ultrasound uh, is a really problem because often i have found that the whatever reports they have given and whatever finding i am getting in the uh, plural see they almost mismatch they say the 350 ml is fluid and we get uh, maybe in uh, maybe more than that much more than that so depending upon say they say it is not or non tapable and we have seen then it is nicely tapable we can remove all the fluid and everything and they we can give lung clearance. so sonological impressions given by the expert and the experience with thoracoscopy is vastly different so what is the practical way out practical way out is the the most likely place is to be chosen for the uh, putting a needle uh, for diagnostic aspiration if you get a clear fluid or pleural fluid then that is a correct site for entry because this is uh, for very uh, this is for very selected cases where there is lot of uh, loculi are there and then radiologists or sonologists are saying no this is not tapable for that particular thing i am uh, giving you a very practical hint now let us go what is safe approach to the plural space now there are many ways there are simple maybe the economical way there may be little costlier way that uh, sophisticated there are trocar cannula and there are uh, more, more more fancy gadgets but trocar cannula let us go what is my experience that the you take a skin incision uh, go to the deeper fascia and the have blunt dissection with arterial forceps because that is a very safe and very uh, effective way of doing this only find you sometimes you may find difficulty in the deeper uh, pleural uh, thickened 
Pura. And uh, there you are know you are knowing that yes, this watch is the depth required for uh, opening the pure space, and you can uh, be safe. I remember one case where I was uh, I had uh, I had a piece of hydrogen thorax, and I was uh, putting a tube, and no matter what I tried. Tried and tried, but I was not able to uh, approach into the um, uh, uh, thoracic space. Mm, but with later on, I realized that yes, it is not a heart or thorax; it is uh, the big dilated stomach. So, because my uh, technique was very safe, I was not. Uh, I didn't encounter that fearful com uh, complication of uh, opening the uh, stomach. And uh, making unnecessary complications of this, so that is why when you are doing the safe procedure alone in the uh, field, uh, well, this blunt dissection helps you a lot. In brief, let us go. What is our pleurovitec? This is a technique of complete pleuroscopy or say thoracoscopy with fiber optic bronchoscope and then specialized this is conduits. I have shown you the picture, and uh, this is just a simple principle. See here, the is a parietal conduit. The parietal conduit has got a bevel up facing to the chest wall. So your pass bronchoscope will come here, and then it will show easy. This is the easy of uh, showing it, and then you further uh, technical uh, intricacies. It, they will be easily sorted out. So what are the directions, uh, depth, and these, and so many things are there in the uh, pleuroscopy with our technique. So all of them are uh, nicely handled because of the instruments. So if you uh, use this parietal and maybe this is the visceral, where this is the lung and this is the conduit and the bevel is down, so that bronchoscope will be facing here. So there are some other uh, facilities like indicators. So you exactly know where the uh, indicator is there and what uh, it is going to um, touch and upon. More beauty of this particular technique is that you can go again, and again, you know, the, because if you are not using a good conduit, standard conduit, and then uh, you are using some uh, improvisation, it may not be possible to um, go to the same uh, areas. So optics, mechanics, and everything has been safety of the bronchoscope and from patient has been considered into this. Here's a simple procedure. You take uh, under local anesthesia. You give an incision. You blunt dissection. You go to the pleura. You put a tube. This was our previous practice because we wanted to be a little safer, safe uh, than. So we, we used to uh, drain all the contents uh, first, then wait for some time, so that now we don't wait. Now we uh, got uh, other the straight. Uh, conduits. We uh, put them into the uh, pleural cavity and start direct suctioning fluid. We have never encountered any any complication with this technique because the it is it is uh, the uh, especially the expansion edema is a fearful complication so far, but it is not there. We have not seen anywhere in last 15 years. The the expansion edema because the air has it goes into the uh, thorax and the compromises the changes. So you put a conduit of two choices. There's a different sequence of putting them. You pass a fiberity bronchoscope into the and peep inside the thorax. So what it is? So that is the thing. Now uh, here are some videos for uh, our patients. See this is the beautiful way of. You see, parietal chest wall, the ribs. It is all studied with small granules. The lung. Please note the uh, appearance. This is the gross appearance is also. If I am going to talk on the uh, gross appearance right now itself. See the lung. The lung is surface is uh, this normal surface. You know, but this is not normal. It is studied with all granular things. These are small. So it is hemorrhagic fluid, and then note there are no adhesions anywhere. There are some negative points are also to be noted. Nicely single pleural cavity is there. You see some tumors are there.
but would like to take biopsies naturally So we have come come to the same spot, uh, spot again. Uh, selection of the uh, site for uh, biopsy is very important because if the uh, tumor is selected on a tangential surface, it will not uh, it will slip through the uh, forceps. So you select in such a way that it is going to be facing directly to the uh, bronch uh, bronchoscope. and then it will not slip moreover you can have a spiked uh, biopsy process so that the it will fix the uh, fix the process and do not slip this was just demonstration we have taken multiple uh, biopsies of this this is proved malignancy it was long number is so old case ha ah, here is another case it's a beautiful scene you can say this nice glistening surface so shining and this uh, artisans sometimes you have to be poetic to see what it is but uh, now you can do the as a medico you can open them these are all oculi so this appearance is typical so you know, thin uh, thin artisans is in layers and then you can open them there are the transparent oculi the fluid is there which is rather yellowish color and then glistening surface this is a beautiful uh, scene who is only this is my uh, tubercular this is a classical tubercular fluid so gross appearance of uh, pleura uh, is a very much suggestive of a diagnosis in many cases that is how you do i think uh, this is uh, one topic for uh, for our pg students the gross appearance and uh, pathology we have work on this uh, we have seen we have analyzed our work and uh, we have submitted to one or two journals i think it is in the pipeline the, the gross appearance and this so here we uh, go for this this was again old case where we were quite conservative how to open this how to uh, now we are not all that uh, uh, slow in our process our uh, technique instruments themselves are very uh, uh, nicely curved they will open the loculi and do the work very fast it is not so uh, so, uh, so so this is the first initial you can see it was done in uh, 13 so uh, this is very uh, i mean the long x okay let us go to the another x mm. sorry it's not no. yeah usually the physicians i have uh, attended the uh, training courses for this and they, they don't touch the visceral pleura that was a rigid warning strict warning of the instructor don't touch but can we do it 
as a physician can we do it that is my question and that was my uh, we we can across the cases like this often in chest practice here are the cases where there is a white line on the right side and there is no much of shift of miasma and you can see some amount of thickening has happened so this is a important so maybe a challenge for a chest physician we have submitted this particular case for thoracoscopy or what we call fluoroscopy with uh, our technique indigenous technique of fluoroscopy friends you are seeing the gamut for x where us has been drained completely and you can see the lung is so shrunk it is covered with the exudates and that the t exudates the thick pus being drained when we are doing thoracoscopy in a patient like this we would like to do something for the collapse and here we are demonstrating you a very simple and straight uh, method of decoding the liquid see our thoracoscopy uh, can do we have two conduits one is the introducer type and the other is filtrator type they have a special cause on their distal end and that can be used for the cutting of the covering of the uh, visceral surface of the pleura which you are seeing here nice this is how the separation of the covering is done from the visceral surface of the lung here some part of the covering of the lung is been removed and the lung is uh, surface is seen part and now we have done fair amount of work on this particular patient we have removed much of the debris right we have removed the uh, covering and see the lung it is peeking uh, popping out nice surface is of the lung is seen this is how the some part of the lung and we will wax free from the covering of the uh, exudates okay now we have finish one part of the lung and we are going to the other lobe so here you can see again the same scene the uh, irregular shaggy uh, covering of the exudates is there on the other part of the lung and same process to be done here also gradually to expose the healthy lung step by step you must have noted even though there is a thick covering uh, covering on the parietal surface we are not really testing it because we are don't think that that is required what is required is the removal of the covering of the lungs that is important the parietal part of the pleura uh, we have a small nasopharynx but we will we will the thickening uh, of the pleura is more important and that is a really big thing Thank you. 
friends here i am interrupting because i wanted to bring out some important things in the to your notice please note the pus pus quantity the pus and the appearance of the plural it is a soft exudate it's a thick exudate as compared with the previous you can see the contrast is marked see it is uh, previous it was glistening and it is not all that glistening it is a dull and uh, the uh, contents of the is a purulent so this is a classical purulent uh empyma and uh, by cross examination you can see that yes this is no this is a single locally they are not uh, i mean uh, closed by uh, multiple uh, adhesions or layers so that is the uh, how we should differentiate it. Here's another interesting case. Well, uh, this is not uh, really fully edited, but uh, you will love to see this appearance. See, nice masses. They are very typical. I thought of foreign bodies or something in the lungs, but uh, well, no foreign body will be looking like this. And there was no uh, mode of entrance to this foreign body in patients' lung pleura. So that is one important point. So let us see what is this. These glistening masses are quite, you know, regular in shape, and oh, they are looking like some seed or something. And when we touch them, they are um, well fragile, I guess. Fragile. They are quite. They are not hard or maybe firm or something. They, they can. They break easily. So we take a biopsy. What it is? So when we have taken biopsy, it was found to be aspergillosis. So this is very unusual case of aspergillosis. Uh, when lungs are not all that uh, involved, uh, but pleura is having a. Unusual inflammation, unusual appearance, and which is not fit into the like tubercular or maybe pyogenic or malignant. We have seen now how was tubercular, how was pyogenic, how was malignant. Um, this is a bit of difference from the uh, from the uh, the so uh, appearances. That's why I have selected these four cases, three four cases to show as a representative how they are your gross appearance and. your keen observations will make a difference another reason for uh, showing selecting this uh, video was i wanted to demonstrate you the technique of foreign body retrieval as such this uh, technique was started with the retrieval of foreign body without any uh, ideas in mind it was first foreign body was removed and that is also a part of our uh, history however i would love to show you how it is uh, how we can deliver a one foreign body and uh, so, so that you can you you can practice it, the retrieval of foreign body in with our technique so unfortunately it is very fragile soft breaks away it is slippery and so many uh, so many problems are there uh here 
I have managed somehow uh, to put uh, one mass into the uh, conduit. So that is the thing. Let us see whether it is there in this in this video. Does it look like malignancy? Of course, it is not. It is not. Doesn't. It doesn't look like. It doesn't look like. It is a very unusual appearance. Well, we can go ahead and do uh, other things also. Let us see whether the third attempt is for that uh, foreign bird ritual. See, when you want to retrieve a foreign body, the uh, technique is not uh, different from the uh, uh, tracheobronchial foreign body. See, whatever modalities you can do with fibrotic bronchoscope in tracheobronchial tree, same can be applied here also. So there is nothing like uh, this cannot be done, this cannot be done, this can be done. Very, very. Uh, The problem with uh, this our technique is sometimes when you are uh, not ready uh, for doing some process like taking biopsy for purpose is not available. The what is to be done with the fibrotic bronchoscope? That was a bothering question. So it goes on hanging into the hands of surgeon. I, however, we I have realized that it is not good uh, hangs all the time. You know, we have devised one stand also. For uh, pluroscope, uh, I mean fibrotic bronchoscope, when the things are not ready. Well, friend, uh, I think it is not possible. But let us go to the uh, next things. Here, these are the various uh, modalities of uh, take instruments and how they are handled. These are not part of our present uh, presentations. So let us go to the uh, today's work. The what can you do with our uh, bronchoscope in plura? So first thing you can do pleural toilet. That was very uh, popular uh, term by from the abdominal surgeon. Pleural peritoneal toilet. So I am using that. I have borrowed. I have borrowed it. So it is possible by two ways. One by the air tube. There is an air tube for the uh, conduit, and you can pass uh, the uh, saline and wash the pleural space there. Or you can use the uh, this working uh, sorry working channel of the bronchoscope with this. The another thing we can we have done is ICD manipulations. Many times we find that you put an intercostal drain in the chest and next day it is not there in a desired place. It is displaced somewhere. So this is a good way of directing into the thing. I, sometimes I will present that particular case how the intercostal uh, uh, tube. Uh, was manipulated nicely into the desired level. So this is very essential many times. The uh, lungs in the apical area do not expand, and the uh, intercostal drain remains in the, on the diaphragm, and the, it, uh, the no air is possible. So there it has to be taken to the scene. Uh, so Debridement you have seen now how it can be done, say, but that is very essential if you are going for diagnostic work. Well, you have to uh, do whatever work is possible with your instrument and at that particular setup. So the brand made will always give a reward, a good reward to the patient. The, you must have seen the, the patient which was almost diagnosed as a chicken tura, not amicable to the pleuroscopy. You have seen on the very, uh, very moment, when the very day, 
the lung is almost full expanded there is no thick uh, rind or the thick, no fluid thickening also so that is also even the adiolysis in a moderate thickened now uh, with the the chronic thickened pleura we have not really uh, submitted to this particular thing uh, but uh, where is a reasonable maybe 2 months 3 months patient is suffering from empyema or pleural pathology you can uh, open nicely the thickening is all that not all that uh, tough our uh, instruments are very safe they don't uh, they don't uh, rupture the normal structure especially arteries etc or vessels they are not uh, cut by this in case of standard uh, our instruments we use the arteries and cauteries and everything and then they are really frightful things however here we don't have adiolysis you know as you are saying there is no hemorrhage or safe least hemorrhage sometimes uh, and then very simple procedure it is not that uh, what we need is little more courage to understand what it is and where we are and with the help of proper our understanding of the mechanics and machine it is very safe drainage of different loculi or other if the loculi are totally close from each other then you one only one resort you have to is open each locula uh, in a different op- stoma or different way with this technique it is not required you are insured inside the tunnel and you know uh, which is the direction of the other locula you just go on digging blunt dissections it is doesn't damage the lung you just separate the adhesions and then we have seen that also wonderful that from one locula to another locula you open them and then clips the pleural surface between the lobes is also wonder good experience it is like a valley to that you see on both the sides there are huge mountains of uh, lung lobes and you travel into the crevices so that experience is, uh, is possible the cannulation of bp is, uh, is bpf bronchopleural fistula is another uh, problem we he, we need something to be done for pleural bronchopleural fistula but this will be at length it will require Uh, understanding of bronchopleural fistula types and this, but bronchopleural fistula as a um, as a infective, say for especially infective uh, bronchopleural fistula should not be a problem with a good uh, chest physicians um, at disposal. Uh, at, I mean, at this, it is not BPF is not because overall time of 10, 20, 50, 20 years. We have seen that the lungs have expanded very nicely, and the problem of bronchial pleural fistula, which used to be there in during our residency days, or um, maybe after our during our when I was not doing this particular procedure, the patients of BPF used to be there in the months uh, ward, and then it was a very very miserable appearance. However, over uh, when once we have started pleuroscopy. we have seen that we have not uh, retained or we have not kept the patients in ward more than maybe 10 15 days so no matter what is the condition of pleura empyema strong both being thickened everything most of the patients have been discharged very well with nicely expanded lung i i remember only one or two patients of bronchopleural fistula where it was quite big It, they could not be uh, salvaged uh, and they but rest of the bronchial pleural fistula are nicely uh, closed by proper drainage because that is the very reason why bronchial pleural fistula has developed into the infective lung then uh, double puncture if you want do uh, double punctures we have done uh, double punctures that is also there but you Uh, you uh, we will go ahead sometimes to show you how double puncture is also can be done now let us go to the basic one more question lung complications i am going to be quite honest with you people because um, there is nothing to be hidden or even exaggerated no, this is just a simple fact maybe i am using some uh, some luxurious words for but the, the fact don't differ much Say for example, the lung tear will be a feared complications, um, or be arterial ruptures or these complications. But with because of our technique, the blunt dissection and everything, this is not really seen. But one instance was there when junior resident uh, was little more enthusiastic, trusted his uh, conduit, and there was small tear. However, it was not really very hazardous thing. Lung expanded nicely. 
so the nature is quite strong enough then pleuritic pain initially there was a pleuritic pain with the conduits then the, this is the thing because it was wider now it is uh, narrower the conduits and they are better manufactured so that is not there and then again very relevant question how much damage we have done with the bronchoscope honestly no we even i tried my bronchoscope in the laboratories in the uh, in the um, uh, mechanical workshop where the manufacturing is been i took my bronchoscope there also but um, per se i don't think i have uh, uh, i mean um, came across with the damage to the bronchoscope because we were quite uh, cautious about it one incident is reported by one of the uh, candidate that the uh, sheath was cut but he himself uh, said that the, uh, the the tip was bent and i was trying to pull through the uh, conduit so naturally the sharp uh, i mean edge my given cut and then sheath was broken however that is also a possibility remote possibility because we have taken care that there will not be any uh, even slightest damage to the uh, bronchoscope sheath at the curvatures so this is how we have taken everything well friends we have done uh, wonderful uh, work. i mean present i mean it was a wonderful experience uh, to do this work to see the results to give the uh, economics benefit to the patients and to be uh, pre- to be present in front of you and uh, well to share my experience with you people thank you very much hello now here are some questions uh, from the audience uh, first one is how long does it take to recover from thoracoscopy frankly he means uh, the operative process i suppose because uh, recovering from thoracoscopy is also recovering from the uh, pleural disease pleural pathology etc so so it's a complex question but per se uh, after doing thoracoscopy usually uh maximum 5 to 7 days we have seen that uh, as a safe uh, safe time you know so that patient should not have recurrence of uh, you can people have done uh, the removal of uh, intercostal drains almost next day or even at the same, uh, same time but uh, we are uh, more conservative we want to be more safe so that is that's why uh, we keep uh, the uh, tubes till the our standard uh, protocol of uh, removing uh, intercostal tube is done say for example you take uh, the fluid should be less than 50 ml there should be lung full expansion then the say uh, trial of clamping the tube is given sometimes and so if after that if there is no complication no pneumothorax then we remove so that's why uh, well uh, we have seen that for uh, after thoracoscopy even if there is empyme or there is a complicated pleural thinning or uh, locular thinning the lung how expanded fairly well that is one uh, thing the uh, now let us go to let uh, the next question from the uh, uh, audience is their thoracoscopy surgery safe and do you recommend a surgeon to do it or an interventional pulmonologist do it and what are the gray areas and which process do you recommend which can be done only by surgeon so well this is a uh, maybe a question of uh, pulling the uh, areas of patients into my areas this areas but uh, as a physician and more energetic person who has uh, done more uh, the uh, adventure surgery in uh, uh, thoracoscopy i would say let us let us have something like this where uh, we want to uh, 
do the first diagnostic work and limited uh, just the, the, the work which we have done uh, limited work thoracoscopy we can do it but suppose the patient is having uh, the underlying lung disease which need intervention or there are a lot of the thoracic surgeries are being done so we they should be done by the surgeries what i have demonstrated is uh, uh, the i am taking a uh, physicians to one step further where the i am uh, allowing them to uh, intervene the uh, visceral surface uh, remove caress the visceral surface remove the uh, thickening so that that much at least i think surgeon should permit us uh, so that we will not be damaging so uh, so where uh, i know we will not going to cut the ma unless there is a experienced thoracic surgeon so interventional pulmonologist i think still should uh, restrict himself to the uh, surface of the visceral uh, pleura so that uh, we will be uh, not uh, facing any uh, serious problems uh, the gray areas are again uh, if we say that the, i am tackling only pleural surface pleural pathology which are amicable to my uh, instruments then there are hardly any gray areas we have defined our uh, limits but uh, uh, but rest of the things can be understood nice uh, between these you know it is the thoracic surgeons can do wonderful work when they need to go into a vascular part parenchymal part is everything okay then let them handle we will not uh, intervene into their areas uh, now it is very common to clamp icds while transporting the patients in the hospital okay is it a bad practice and what is your comment now let us understand already the patient had a huge uh, empyema pneumothorax everything patient had uh, fairly uh, gone crisis of compromised lungs and now we have removed it so by uh, that is very common practice you should not uh, i mean blow a clamp the tube and clamp this. but how does it really matter does it really matter already lung has fairly expanded so we even with poor uh, lung uh, patient was surviving so though even though theoretically you should have all the time open uh, the tube should be open to the underwater seal and uh, it should be transported nicely but uh, in a practice i don't think that it is going to make a much of a difference unless uh, there is uh, maybe um, tension in the thorax was there or something but still Uh, as a uh, only uh, part of our uh, empyemas uh, pneumothorax routine everything uh, this will not be much of uh, will not make much difference so if you think really very tension pneumothorax even itself is done doesn't uh, expand very fast it takes some time so when transporting from uh, patient from one say our operation room to ward uh, to be frank in a material it will not make a much of difference by clamping or not clamping if it is convenient you uh, remove the air uh, transport the patient fast okay fine but that per se will not be a very hazardous thing any other question ha uh, what are the post procedure precautions the post procedure precautions uh, these are all standard uh, precautions the daily drainage chart look for the patency of intercostal uh, tubes look watch for the um, general condition of the patient see the air entry see how the lung is expanding see uh, so this is how these are not uh, there is no specific unless you are doing some intervention in the lungs and vessels uh, then uh, only there is going to be problem yes how do you manage pneumothorax yes this is a really good question because uh, pneumothorax uh, often uh, there uh, submit to only intercostal drain and uh, uh, people forget about it but my uh, experience uh, with uh, pneumothorax you uh, peep inside because even though it is pneumothorax lung might be healthy there are two things one the pleural surface uh, 
it has to be studied what are the blades what are the uh, surface i mean how the surface is there is there an associated condition so these things have to be studied in the proscopy so pneumothorax itself should not be any hindrance or the uh, i mean it should be actually indication in the our um, uh, proscopy now next thing is if you the, the uh, small blades you can puncture them at least because this same patient is going to be a recurrent uh, patient pneumothorax so if we take uh, proper precautions right in the first instance probably further sequence uh, the instances of pneumothorax recurrent pneumothorax can be averted so that is how so you do pleurodesis and we can do uh, you can uh, do the blades etc can be prevented so that's why uh, pneumothorax even pneumothorax we should do the uh, pleurodesis will be a useful uh, way out for in case of pneumothorax say but in case of empyema already there is lot of uh, inflammation has occurred in vascular pleura and okay. in case of inflamed pleura what we want is they should be in opposition with each other once the visceral pleura and parietal pleura come in each other the adhesions etc set, so they occur very fast so as such by putting uh, extra uh, chemical irritants or mechanical irritants will not be really advantage i mean uh, honestly it will not be a uh, very extra advantage unless uh, one mean uh, there is a specific indication but for inflamed pleura what i was suggest that they should be in uh, near in con- con- close contact but that is good enough uh, to care so our uh, recurrent pneumothorax will be a good in, uh, justifiable indication for pleurodesis hello Haan. sir can you hear me yeah i am sir i wanted to ask how do you manipulate uh, icd with fluoroscopy yeah that is a wonderful thing but that will take a little more time but see once it happened that uh, the tube was lying at the diaphragm and the uh apex there was a uh, low pocket of pneumothorax we removed the uh, uh, intercostal drain we passed the conduits through the conduits we passed one guide uh, like uh, um, uh, rice tube so that that okay. reached to the <laughs> reached to the apex and then we uh, passed the uh, small intercostal uh, tube to the okay. conduit so that is with how ha uh, they manipulate with the same port same same port same port. they are, we actually manage everything in the same port we opening the open loculi going to loculi and everything in the same port because mm-hmm. we have got a lot of flexibility and this flexibility is a uh, asset to, to a physician so the undream things can be done by a physician that's what uh, i think so yeah. you, uh, fantastic sir thank you sir. amazing talk sir it was uh, very thank informative you. thank you thank you very much sir. very nice techniques actually it's easier to see and do things yeah fluoroscopy helps us to see things then we can go for a better uh, treatment uh, true you must see you must see if i thank you. very nice session thanks a lot thank you it is pleasure to be with you all people bye bye Nice.